guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about how to create consistency with your images when you're color grading. So I actually have a couple of different ways that I do tend to like to do this and I've had a lot of questions about how to create consistency with your images and a lot of you are struggling with getting the same colors onto different images and I guess not using actions necessarily in Photoshop. So today I have a couple of different techniques for you which I feel might be helpful and I really hope you guys enjoy the video. So the first technique I'm going to talk about is actually something pretty simple and it's by using PSDs when you're doing your color grading. And this technique is basically something I'm just going to call drag and drop. So this is generally more of a manual way of moving across your color grading from image to image. However, it's definitely something that I prefer to do and it's my first choice of creating consistency with my images because it does give me better control over how the end result is and it allows me to include things like masking and to do things a little bit more specifically for each image. Definitely something that I prefer to do when I'm color grading my images and different sets. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this in the best way that I can. However, I hope that everything is clear enough. There's just a few things that I do need to touch on when it comes to masking different things in the way that I work. So as you guys know, I do use luminosity masks and I do use masking when it comes to adjustment layers. And I do have two masks in this current color grade and it is for levels and vibrance. So just to let you guys know, I use all of my levels, curves, selective color, all of my color grading and brightness I use in one group. So in regards to the masks again, I do have a luminosity mask here, which is the levels layer. And I do have a vibrance layer that has a mask on top. It was used to create more vibrance within the eyeshadow in this image and less vibrance on the skin tone. So you can see that's what that little black spot is there in the mask. So with both of these, I'm going to actually drag all of the layers over. And if I was going to drag specific layers over, I would just click on each individual layer and holding down control to move those layers over. But I'm actually just going to click on the group here, color grading and levels, and I'm going to drag it across to my image, which is this one here. I'm just going to bring that out and click on the back image again. And now I'm just going to drag over this group here to this image and now we have all of the color grading and all of the layers that I wanted in one group neatly on my new image. So as I said before there is a couple of things with the masking that I do want to chat to you guys about. So obviously I had a levels layer that was a luminosity mask so we're going to go ahead and delete this one here because that's matching for the other photo. And to get that luminosity mask the way that I would want it on this photo, the same highlight selection, I would go to channels and hold down control and click RGB. I would then go back to layers and just apply new layer mask just here. So now you can see in this box here that luminosity mask has been applied but for this image specifically. So that is all fixed now and I'm also going to fix up this one here for vibrance. So as I said this one was specifically created for the other photo with the blue eyeshadow and that was to increase the vibrance of that while decreasing the vibrance of the skin tone. So for this image I don't actually think we need to make any alterations to the eyeshadow so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this layer mask and click on add layer mask just for a blank one there. So that's pretty much it. It is pretty simple for drag and drop. And as I said, it does give me more control about how each layer looks and how I can adjust each layer once it's on my new image. And as you can see, it does create a bit of consistency specifically with the skin tones and the makeup and the color grading in general. This is definitely my preferred method. Uh, as I've said, it does give me so much more control specifically with this technique. Uh, the next technique that I'm going to show you guys, it doesn't have as much control. So I'll show you guys why in just a second. But this is generally how I would keep consistency with my images. So now I'm going to move on to the next technique, which is creating a LUT. So L-U-T, LUT stands for lookup tables. And this is another method that you can use to create consistency with your images by creating a color grade in Photoshop and applying it to further images down the track. It sort of works like an action, but not really because you don't have several layers that you can work with. It is just everything combined into the one layer. And the way that I would do this is by using a very basic color grade and using adjustment layers. And that's how that generally works. 
So I have to do this a little bit differently, as I said, because the way that the LUT is saved is by using those adjustment layers and I can't have any masking or anything like that in there with dodging and burning layers. So that's why I've removed the skin retouching from this and we're starting from scratch. So I'm going to create a really quick color grade now and be back with you guys in just a second. <music> created a really quick color grade there you can see that these are all basic adjustment layers I've got a curves vibrance selective color color balance and a levels layer so as I said all very simple and this is going to make for an easy transition into a LUT so the way that we would create one of these is by going to file export and then color lookup tables and I usually use all of these settings as the default and then press OK so you can save LUTs under Photoshop filing. However, I'm pretty lazy and I'm actually just going to do it under the pictures uh, on my computer. And I don't know why I'm saving it there. It's just kind of easy for the sake of this tutorial, but I'm going to name it LUT tutorial and save it in there so I can easily access it when I go to load it up on another image. And now we've created our LUT. So that is all done. Now we just need to apply it to another image to give that image the same consistent color grade. So I'm going to go over to our other image here. And once again, I've stripped it back. There's no skin retouching. There's no layers at all on this image just to make things easy to follow along with. And the way that we would apply the LUT is just by going down to the adjustment panel and going to color lookup. Then we would go to load 3D LUT and click on that again. And then we will scroll down and find where our LUT is saved, which is this one here. And there we go. So you can see that's all been applied in one easy layer. It's very neat and tidy as far as I'm concerned when it comes to retouching. Uh, it's very, very simple to use and it's very good for a lot of photographers out there that don't require a lot of skin retouching to be done on their images. I would suggest creating the LUTs before you start skin retouching because as I said, it doesn't really allow for dodging and burning and things like that. Um, anything that's really not an adjustment layer without masking. So I'd say to do that first, create your LUT and then go on to do skin retouching afterwards. And for future images, it should be fine to just apply whenever you see fit. So this is the layer that you end up with. You can change the opacity, the blending modes. You can change everything about this particular layer, but this is also one of the reasons why I don't prefer it as a technique to create consistency, especially on my own work, as I am a lot more specific with what I need to be doing retouching wise, and it doesn't give me any adjustments on those specific layers anymore. So the levels layer, the color balance, I can't really go in and adjust those layers anymore or adjust the coloring. I'm just kind of stuck with this one layer. So like I said, that will work for a lot of photographers out there who don't necessarily need a lot of retouching layers. However, for me with doing beauty photography in particular, it doesn't always work as well. So I definitely prefer the drag and drop technique, even though it's a bit slower, it's a bit more manual, but this is also another really good technique for a lot of photographers out there. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you see all the tutorials and videos I'll have out in future. And if you guys have any tips for creating color consistency with your images, please feel free to put it down in the comment section below because a lot of people do look through the comment section and try to find extra tips. So that's a really good way for them to find out other tips about this subject as well. If you guys do have any other requests, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.